Welcome to Gazebo Build Part 3. In this part, we're going to finish off the roof, cut the rafter tails off. I got that all figured out. And then I was thinking last night we should put some sort of baffles in there since this is going to be screened in and just to keep that area closed. So yeah, we'll do that. I'll get Garrett cut nose, I'll cut the rafter tails, and then we'll be on to sheathing. Alright, so rafter tails are all cut. I kind of screwed up on the math a little bit. I just had to cut an angle on those rather than cut them square. And then I'm just working on these baffle blocks here, just so we don't have to put screen up in there so it won't be open and let the birds in or whatever. And I put them to the outside, speaking of birds, just so, because I could have put them to the inside and got away with not cutting this angle on it. It would have lined up perfectly, the edge of the two by four. I don't know how that would would have worked, but it would have. But I was worried about like if they were on the inside, like birds or whatever would get up and nest in here and especially like in these corners. And I didn't really want, there to be a, a bird habitat in here. So yeah, we'll uh, take a break from the baffles and start sheathing the front. <laughs> decking on the roof sort of a shiplap thing but it's not shiplap it doesn't overlap um but yeah it looks pretty good i see there's a tag there that we'll have to cut out but yeah that'll be a nice look from the inside up into the rafters i'll just put one little piece up in there to finish it off i just left it open so i could see the hips to put the track saw on but yeah, we'll uh, keep going around. Quick little sheathing update. Um, it's going on pretty good. Haven't had any issues. It's starting to firm it up a little bit. The inside looks really nice. We put all the smooth in there. So now we'll just get these other two sides done and then fascia boards, I guess. And then it'll be ready for shingles. Okay, so we're just finishing up, closing in the roof here. Some of this stuff has a lot of garbage on it. Gotta get it out of the way. But yeah, putting this shiplap-like stuff down is pretty straightforward. Let's take the measurement. like that. Now I'll take my next measurement for Garrett. <clears throat> 58! Alright, well we got to start on the fascia. This is what I meant if you didn't know by the squared off fascia, but I don't know. I think that looks pretty good. Nice tight miters, roughs on, so we still have to fix that a bit and do the back side, but that's essentially what it'll look like. Now, I thought I'd just take a minute here and sort of address a question that I've been getting quite a bit lately. And that is, what is up with the price of lumber? And now I'm not an economist or anything, but I have read a little bit of, you know, economy stuff and my take on it is it's got a lot to do with supply and demand, right? So right now with the pandemic, 
the supply f for most goods, or at least was, you know, diminished quite a bit because of all the lockdowns and everything like that. So when your supply is diminished, your demand goes up, right? So that's sort of um, one of the principles of the theory of neoclassical economics is the value of a good isn't derived from the costs involved in production, but rather it's derived from the demand for the good. So that's essentially what's going on is the demand is so high for lumber because everyone's stuck at home, you know, building decks and fences and they want to, you know, spruce up their backyards and they got nothing else to do because they're stuck at home working from home or whatever. And I don't really know where the money is coming from. Um, my other theory on this is, which sort of dips into the theory of Keynesian economics, is that the governments are stimulating the economy. So putting more money in people's pockets, like in, in the States, it's the stimulus checks, and in Canada, it's the CERB and everything like that, which I don't really know how that works because I never applied for it because I didn't need it. But yeah, so that's sort of basically what's going on there. Um, in the simplest terms that I know how to explain it. But yeah, um, if anyone else is, has a better background in, you know, economics, um, feel free to educate me. But yeah, um, you know, it's sort of anticipated that in the fall, um, the prices will start to go down because it'll be the onset of winter and, you know, the demand will go down as the supply increases as the pandemic tones down but yeah that's sort of how it works like um everybody will sort of be watching the prices and right now everyone's like myself included is sort of worried that the price is going to continue to rise so everybody's buying now just to avoid you know, what might happen in June or July when the prices go even higher. Like, that's what I did with these last four jobs here. I picked up all the material I needed because first concern is it's probably not going to be available by the time I start those jobs. And second of all, I'm concerned that my quotes will be no good because the price has gone up another 20% or whatever. And I can't really pass that off to the client after I've given the quote. Like, that would come out of my pocket, my labor and everything. So, yeah, that's just a, a little rant on my take on what's going on, at least. Like I say, feel free to educate me in the comments if you have any further insight into the economic situation of what's going on. So thanks for joining me for part three. Um, stay tuned for more episodes as we keep picking away at this project. Thanks for watching. Stay healthy, everyone.